guys and welcome to this lesson on linearization. So what is linearization? I think it would actually be best if we took a little field trip to desmos.com for that. So let's take a look. So here we are at desmos.com and I actually plotted this really crazy looking function. So here's the whole function. It's x, x minus 2 squared, x plus 2 squared, x minus 1, and then x plus 1. So here's kind of the idea behind this. Um, what if I asked you to evaluate this for let's say how about 1.3. So if you think about that, it would be a little bit of work, right, to actually have to go through and, and plug that in by hand. And so the idea behind linearization is this. So 1.3 is pretty close to what number? It's pretty close to one. So here's one on my graph. So the idea behind linearization is let's, let's start by just focusing in on one. So notice that I'm just starting to to zero in on this. So the idea behind linearization is that if you start to really zero in on a function, eventually it starts to look like a line. So look at the, the function that I'm left with. It just looks like a line. And plugging in a decimal into the function of a line is much simpler than plugging it into this entire monstrosity, right? This, this would be kind of a pain. So linearization basically takes a point, so it takes an area of the graph, so in this case somewhere near one, and it turns that part of the graph into a line so that you can come up with an approximation that is somewhere around that point that you're trying to get to. So, and so basically, you know, if you back in the day were trying to estimate certain difficult calculations, this could be an effective way just to estimate certain things. So let's talk about linearization. So let f of x be differentiable at some point a, then this function here, this is what's known as the linearization. So I want you to take a good look at this function for a moment. Let's, let's zero in on it. And by the way, I'd recommend that you write this down before moving on with the video. So this is the linearization. And I just kind of want to take a second to think about it. So I want to, I want to rearrange it for a moment. So if I just subtract f of a, I would get this. And this equation is really y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 in disguise. So remember, with the point slope form, you're plugging in a specific point. So notice the specific point in this case would be plugging in a. So here, f of a will be a specific point, a is obviously a specific point, and then you also need a slope for the point slope form of a line. So if I plug a into the derivative, that gets me the slope of the, the line. So the linearization, it's got the word line in it, and it literally is a line. So this equation actually is related to the point slope form if it's easier for you to remember that. So the whole idea behind this then is that f of x will be approximately close to L of X, so to our linearization, when we are close to A. So it's not always going to work, but we, but when we're close to A, this will work. And by the way, the point A is called the center. So this is a pretty short video, actually. I, I'm going to show you just two examples of how to do this. And um, it's pretty straightforward. You really can just use the formula. So this L of X equals F of A plus f prime of a times x minus a. And then the, the context of the problem will really matter. So our a in this case, this is maybe something that's slightly harder to calculate with, negative 0.9. So what would be a close number to 0.9 that would be easier to work with? The, the better number in this case would be um, a equals negative 1. So if I come up with a linearization around negative one, then that will actually get me pretty darn close to negative 0.9. And we'll, we'll do a little comparison of this in a second. So what I wanna do first is um, I just wanna, let's see, let's go ahead and take the derivative of f prime of x. So that's negative x to the negative second. And then I wanna fill in some of these numbers. So let's evaluate f of negative one. So that would just equal negative one. And then let's evaluate f prime of negative one. So that will also equal negative one. So now I can go ahead and plug that information into my linearization. So this will be negative one plus negative one times x plus one. So my linearization in this case will be negative one plus negative one, uh, oops, 
negative 1, I just messed all that up. Negative 1 plus negative x minus 1. So if I format all of this, this comes out to negative x minus 2. So here's the equation that I have, and here's the linearization of it. So now if I want to estimate the true value of this negative 0.9, I can just plug this in. So that would be kind of the idea behind this. So if I took negative 0.9, so then this would ultimately just give me, um, let's see, that would become 0.9, that would become positive minus two. So that will equal negative 1.1. Okay, so now I just wanna do a quick comparison of the true values. So I've got the linearization that we just did versus the actual functional value. So I'm going to plug in negative 0.9 into both of these. So plugging negative 0.9 into my linearization, this is what we just did. And then plugging negative 0.9 into my function, this is what it would look like. And remember, this was negative x, so this, this negative 0.9 will become positive when I plug it in. So comparing the, the values of the functions, so my linearization gave me a value of negative 1.1 and the actual value is negative 1.11111 repeating. So the linearization gets you, you know, it can get you pretty close to a good approximation. And remember, we designed all of this around using a equals negative one. So if there's like a, a value that you're looking to approximate, you choose a simpler value to make your linearization so that you can then eventually plug in that, that other value that you want. So I know there's like two A's here, but um, I know that at least the, the book that we're using uses A and kind of wants you to go about that way. So I want to be consistent with the notation. So you can kind of fudge this a little bit is what I'm saying. So I've got one more example for you guys. And so the idea here is I would like to evaluate the cube root of 27.2, but instead of actually plugging this in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and linearize this function. So if you wanna pause the video here just to try this on your own, go for it and then hit play when you're ready. So remember my linearization is this f of a, um, oops, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus 1. And I want to approximate this for a equals 27. Much easier to, to calculate this, and then we'll approximate it with this. Oops, and this should have been, uh, sorry, x minus a. Okay, so now I can go ahead and find f prime of x. That's going to be 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, and then I can plug in some numbers. So if I take f of 27, so that's the cube root of 27, the cube root of 27 is just equal to three. And then f prime of 27, so that would be one third times nine. So this comes out to one over 27. Okay, so now we can linearize here. So I've got L of x is gonna equal three plus one over 27 times x minus 27, so that it works out pretty nicely. So then my line in this case will be three plus one over 27 minus one. So, oops, and I lost the x uh, minus one. And so then this comes out to two plus one over 27 x. Okay, so there's kind of my approximation. So now I actually just want to jump to comparing the functional value with the linearized value so we can make that comparison. So now I'm going to plug that 27.2 into my linearization and then compare it to the, the value of the function. So here it is in that, that um, linear equation versus here it is just plugged into the function. So the values are actually pretty impressive here. So here, my linearization came out to 3.0074. So just about the first four digits are the same, right? They both come out to 3.0074, and then after that, they start to kind of deviate. But it's a pretty good approximation. So if you're in my class and you're wondering what are we actually going to be doing with linearization, so this is kind of the comparison and what I want you to be able to understand. So um, that, that's about as deep as we really need to go with it. Uh, so I will just leave you guys at that. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll talk to you guys next time.